The beer block, also called intravenous regional anesthesia, provides local anesthesia for upper or lower extremity surgical procedures. It is indicated only for surgeries lasting less than 90 minutes of duration and is well suited for procedures below the level of the elbow or knee. Before starting the procedure, identify all equipment and check to see that it is functioning properly. For the beer block, you will need a Curlix 5-inch S-March wrap, 50 milliliter syringe of 0.5% lidocaine, and a double cuff tourniquet. The tourniquet is available in different sizes, so it is important to choose the size that best fits your patient. Select a distal vein in the affected limb, in this case the hand. Cleanse the site with alcohol. Proceed to insert a 20 or 22 gauge catheter into the vein. Ensure that the catheter flows easily. Secure the catheter to the skin with tape. Apply the curlix around the limb where the tourniquet will be located. This helps to avoid bruising at the site of the tourniquet. Correctly place the cuff on the patient's arm over the soft cotton wrap such that you align the proximal and distal bladders to the patient's body. When the cuff is properly placed, re-identify the two cuffs. Looking at the tourniquet, notice that there are two bladders. This is the distal cuff, and this is the proximal cuff. Connect the cuff to a pressure source to provide air for inflation. The proximal cuff is connected to the blue hose, and the distal cuff is connected to the red hose. Ask an assistant to help you by raising the patient's arm to allow gravity to drain venous blood away from the extremity. Keep the arm in the raised position for at least one minute as there needs to be adequate time for passive exsanguination. After passive drainage, the S-March bandage is used to actively exsanguinate the extremity. Starting at the most distal point from the patient's body, wrap the S-March bandage tightly around the extremity. Proceed proximally until the S-March bandage is flush with the edge of the tourniquet. Ask your assistant to inflate the distal tourniquet cuff to 100 millimeters of mercury above the patient's baseline systolic pressure. To complete exsanguination, inflate the proximal cuff. When the proximal cuff is completely inflated, deflate the distal cuff. When the proximal cuff is inflated, unwrap the S-March bandage. After removing the 5-inch S-March wrap, examine the arm for evidence of arterial and venous occlusion. You may see vessel congestion, which indicates the loss of venous flow. Arterial occlusion results in skin pallor. Several different local anesthetics may be chosen for the beer block. Slowly inject the medication into the IV. Total injection time should take 90 to 120 seconds. Using a forearm tourniquet instead of an upper arm tourniquet results in a dose reduction of lidocaine from 3 mg per kilogram to 1.5 mg per kilogram. This reduces the potential for toxicity and side effects that can occur with the release of the tourniquet. Also, forearm tourniquets are associated with less patient discomfort and are therefore tolerated for longer periods of time. During the anesthetic injection, monitor the patient's vital signs for evidence of systemic toxicity, including a notable change in heart rate. Despite the best preparation, 35 to 40 minutes after cuff inflation, patients often complain of pain at the tourniquet site. Pain relief can be achieved by changing the pressure in the bladder cuffs. Inflate the distal tourniquet completely, checking the cuff pressure to ensure proper inflation. After the distal cuff is inflated, the proximal cuff can be deflated. This change provides immediate relief from the pressure of the cuff. At the conclusion of the surgery, deflate the cuff methodically and carefully. This is a process of repeated cycles of cuff inflation and deflation 
used to minimize the amount of anesthetic released at any given time. Deflate the distal cuff for approximately 30 seconds. Then reinflate the cuff. After reinflation, wait 30 seconds before releasing the pressure in the cuff again. This process needs to be repeated at least once, but an additional cycle can be performed if needed. If the surgery lasts less than 30 minutes from time of initial anesthetic injection, do not deflate the cuff. Wait until 30 minutes has passed to proceed with cuff deflation. This will prevent the release of large amounts of local anesthetic into systemic circulation.